Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to compress a kick drum. This is the second part in our kick drum mixing series, so if you missed part one, check it out here. There's tons of different ways to approach this, but they all depend on two things, the source audio and the vibe of the song. Getting one to fit with the other is the key to having an awesome production. Now, let's dive into some compression setups. The first thing to check for when compressing a kick is the overall performance. Are most of the hits solid, or is it all over the place? If leveling is required, I'll use a pretty fast attack with a low ratio to get everything hitting evenly. Once the hits are fairly even, we can start shaping the sound of the drum. If the kick drum needs more transient information to cut through the mix, I'll use a compressor to shape it like this. If the kick is poking out too much in a mix, I'll set a really fast attack to knock the transient back. This helps the kick feel more roomy and vibey. When you're going for a kick tone like this, pay attention to the release. Having too short of a release will cause an unnatural blooming sound, like this. And too long of a release will make the kick sound muddy since the next transient will be ducked before the gain reduction returns to zero. And that sounds like this. Another thing to pay attention to when compressing kicks is the low end. If the attack is too fast, it can duck the low end before it has time to ring out. Sometimes the best thing to do is revisit the EQ to shape the attack. With this EQ adjustment, I'm getting a little less click, which means I can back off the attack. Awesome, that's sitting great on its own. Now let's check how it sounds with the other drum shells. It's standard to use a compressor on the drum bus. It's a good idea to take another look at the kick compression after dialing in the drum bus. Dynamics and EQ changes on the bus could change the kick sound into something that isn't wanted.
The last thing I want to mention here is multiband compression. This is an awesome tool for kicks, especially in music that has a lot of fast kicks. I'm going to use two bands with a crossover right here. The low band is going to have a pretty slow attack. I don't want it to react unless there's a buildup in these lower frequencies. Check it out. Okay, cool. Now I can use the high band to control the attack. I want a slightly faster attack to catch the transients. This is also a great place to add high end. Perfect, that's fitting just right with this song. This isn't the only way to use multiband. You can tighten up the kick attack on the low band to get more punch from each hit. You can use an even faster attack on the high band to push the transient down without affecting the bass. Try different settings on these two bands to totally transform your kick sound. And that's it. Taking control of the kick dynamics is the perfect starting point for most mixes. Getting this right is a solid foundation to build the rest of the mix on. Just make sure you don't go too crazy with the settings until the rest of the mix is balanced. It's common to come back to this step, so don't feel bad if the first thing you try doesn't work. If you really want to take your drum mixes to the next level, check out our free drum mixing course. This is a comprehensive set of lessons from kick EQ to drum bus compression and everything in between. Sign up for free in the description below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.